I grew up as an atheist and found God in my 20s out at a business convention in North Carolina. I had already been involved in the fan community of sci-fi, fantasy, etc. and realized that if I could get saved at a church service at a business convention, why can't I start doing the same kind of thing at places I already am and grow where I'm planted? This is my mission field. For a long time, my wife was a sign language interpreter, and she was talking to strangers who were right among us. There was a nation of people that were their own nation, but they were all around us. And I realized that she had a foreign mission that was right here in my own town. I realized that so did I. I'm talking to the strangers and aliens. We're all called to be strangers and aliens. We're supposed to live lives with such a distinction, we look like we're from another planet. And some of us have a good head start on it. <laughs> you know this. <laughs> but as a result of that, I focus on this as my group. I do the same thing in my office. I'll start Bible studies since I'm surrounded by geeks there. But this is where my heart really is. The sci-fi fantasy horror fans. Out of the, what, 5,000 people that come to this convention, whatever it is, we know that some portion of us are going to be Christians. Why not get together, realize that we're not alone, get some fellowship together. And although, as Chad said, horror and Christianity seem to be opposites, if you look at it superficially, I don't think they are. The scariest book I've ever read is the Bible. <laughs> Got it. Monsters, dragons, deaths, sacrifice, all it should be uh, at least R rated. Right. On the shelf. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so solid, and in which case we just got to yeah. yeah. right. process. <laughs> the plagues. Yeah. yeah. But by bringing Christianity to the realm of horror, where it already is, just bringing to light what already exists, that is a way that we can reach others. Because if you think about that, a person who is deeply looking in, into the horror thing, um, they're probably not going to pop up. I mean, they're not going to pick up a, a book that looks off with bunches of colors and bright and shiny and happy and sparkling and horror type thing. They're not going to pick up a book. So it's not a way also. I know it's not a way. That's a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. Got an hour That's all right. That's all right. What are some of your favorite movies that I would, say, uh, I would say, and I don't think, I don't think in the Shyamalan is Christian. I do know that's how often he does this, but I don't know. I still have not seen that one. Oh, it's, it's, it's really good. I don't listen. Yeah, it's got a twist, which actually has me up for a full week. I really enjoyed that. I don't want to say it changed my life, but it's just amazing to watch. And it's so inspiring that you can take something that's kind of scary, and yet you can still have that redemptive thing in the So you can still show it. So I really like that. Tracy? I, I have not seen The Devil, but that makes me think of The Devil's Advocate, which I always thought I like that should one be too. a very, I mean, it's an adult story for certain, but I always thought that should be included in it because, I mean, there was, there was Al Pacino, and yeah, he was like, look at yeah. this, nobody ever sees me. Oh, they just they just ignore me. I'm the one guy, and that's and that's how he likes it, you know. And, and I just thought, you know, wouldn't it be great if entertainment was just entertainment, and we had kind of had the little Christian tag on it, but we had entertainment out there that was that had a message. I mean, how many times do you see a, a message with this? You're always seeing a you know a moral to a story. So we don't have to be non to have non the story. You know, and at the end of Devil's Advocate, there was a chance. Yep. I don't know. There's a, the best the website you can tell is the one that they don't realize that you're telling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A website called Movie Ministries. Uh, you go out there and they take popular movies, sci-fi or whatever, and turn them into Bible studies. You can get one for The Matrix or Pirates of the Caribbean, something like that. Look at, you know, taking a piece of popular entertainment and looking for God in it. That's true. And see, that's yeah. the thing is that if you look for it, you'll find it. Yeah. If you want to look for evil and everything, you'll find it. But if you want to look for it, for a story, for Christ, for evil, for, 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 for I think now's a good time to, to plug the... Uh, 
uh, Chris's message tomorrow, yeah. where he's going to be a fucking gun and free yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not the movie, because I don't think anything good is going to I don't understand that. I thought I was going to That's all I hear. I'm going to be that. If we're going down the line talking about our, our favorite horror movies uh, that, that pertain to this table, um, I, I've, I've also got a devil, but um, my favorite one right now, and it's one I, I just watched last week, it was uh, The Right. It just came out in 2009. I remember the ads, but I haven't seen it. And, uh, Anthony, Anthony Hopkins plays a, 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 a but uh, he plays he plays an exorcist in the movie, and yeah, you, you can kind of get a feel for what exorcism is really like in The Exorcist, but they actually did heavy research for the ride, and uh, you get chills. Uh, I, I've, I've looked up how to, you know, the way the Catholic Church teaches exorcism and how to deal with demonic possession. And uh, the level of realism in that movie, uh, it'll blow you away. And there's a great message at the end of it, and uh, brilliant performances all the way It's Anthony. Uh, I'll add another tick on the, on the recommendation for Devil. I thought that was great. Um, also, Three out of four panels are great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, another Shyamalan movie uh, that, that I thought was good as far as that same kind of theme goes is uh, Signs. Um, Swing away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get chills. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm also a, a very big fan of Scott Derrickson's Exorcism of Emily Rose. Yeah, um, yeah that's. I'm for that. I watched that in the <laughs> yeah, I watched, I watched the quarter with the lights on, and I still don't understand. Yeah, yeah it's, it's probably one of the uh, few movies that have scared me to any degree as an adult, and therefore it has risen to the level of one of my favorites. Um, and, you know, as I didn't know anything about Scott Derrickson at the time. Uh, never heard of him until I watched the movie, and I got to the end, saw the, the message that it had at the end. It was, couldn't help but thinking, you know, I wonder if this guy is a, a, is a Christian. But, you know, I don't think that you know, necessarily have to be to put that kind of message in. It's like Shyamalan. I, I think I actually heard that he was a practicing Hindu, and I don't know that for a fact, but, you know, whether he is or, or not, he has a positive spiritual message that, that a Christian can agree on in, in at least two of his movies. So, I know that that doesn't necessarily have to be the case for you to, for you to do something like that. But, um, as I looked up Scott and, and read some of his thoughts, uh, found out that yes, he is a, uh, definitely a Christian. He is, uh, has some very interesting, well thought out points on uh, mixing uh, religion and horror in, uh, in storytelling. Um, and I'm hoping eventually, if, if we are able to keep doing panels like this at, at this and other conventions, maybe get him involved with coming sharing some of his ideas on the subject matter. Um, and uh, it, it's, you know, going through the movie, powerful, scary experience, but then when you get the end, it's like Dave said a little bit ago, the, the light shot, shone so brightly because of all the darkness you got, you had to go through to get to that point, and then the end hits you, and it's just, you know, I, I think some people were let down by it because it is a positive spiritual message at the end, uh, but... I thought it took it from being a horror movie to a great movie in of any genre. It just took it to the next level because it wasn't typical, um, and it uh, it wasn't necessarily the most cinematic, the most Hollywood ending you could have for a movie. But it was deeper. It was a level deeper than that, and uh, I was really impressed by that. Uh, same thing with uh, Frank Peretti's The Oath. That's one of my favorite fiction novels. Uh, and I enjoyed the dragons eating people and, you know, the whole horror aspect of the terrors uh, that he wrote about. But he doesn't enjoy dragons eating people. Exactly, right? <laughs> you know. Probably. I don't think dragons 
but, um, but but once again, you know, the, the horrors that, that we read about in, in the story uh, bring out the, the spiritual truths to a degree that, that perhaps they wouldn't have otherwise. Um, and uh, one thing that, that I, I keep hearing from people when I bring up this subject is that, um, you know, if, if, if you're doing it as a, simply as a marketing gimmick, it's going to fail, which I agree with. You know, if we're, if we're putting in hard just to say, oh, you know, look, come buy my book because it's, you know, hard. Eh, whatever. Um, if you're putting in the religion or the spiritual messages, even, in, even outside of, of uh, uh, obvious religion, uh, just for the sake of having a spiritual message, if you're just trying to shoehorn it in where it doesn't belong, then, yeah, okay, you know, why is anybody going to want to read this or, or see it? You know, it's, uh, it feels too forced. It, you know, it's not, it's not an enjoyable read or it's not an enjoyable uh, movie. But when you have a project that calls for both and, and you approach both with the... Uh, with, with a love for each one. You love the horror genre, you love the spirituality, and, and you're writing because you love those, then it's bound to come together in such a way that it's gonna complement each other and each section is going to make the other stronger. Uh, and both being sections or, or you know, two halves into a whole um, that hopefully other people are gonna enjoy as well and something out of. Two things that come to for me, one is Legion that I like a lot more than I expected to. <laughs> I think we may have a debate, sir. You may be back up here. Well, in Legion, there's essentially a second rebellion in heaven. God says, kill this person, and another angel says, no, I'm not going to let you do that, and fights another other angels. Uh, I didn't even get that from the previous. The previous one was like an average monster movie or something, but there was actually more to it than I thought. The reason I want to see it from the preview is the ice cream man with the extending limbs. Yeah. <laughs> I play enough Twisted Metal, I want to see the crazy ice cream man. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but the one that really sticks out for me is frailty. Frailty, you have a, a man raising his two children to go and kill people because those people are demons. We don't know that at all. Seen it. But I'm not going to spoil the ending, but it's a fantastic movie. Scary as all get out. Frailty. Yeah, stars Bill Pullman. Game over, man. Game over. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Do you have any opinion one way or the other? If you were or were not a comic book fan, what did y'all think of comic book? I liked it. I liked it. I thought it was interesting talking about the spiritual battles that yeah. go on. In Constantine, uh, Keanu Reeves plays John Constantine, who killed himself, but then was brought back three minutes later. But as a suicide, in the mythology there, he was doomed to hell and could not redeem himself. So now that he has this second life, he is able to see angels, demons all around him, and he does what he can to fight against the darkness. Yeah. Actually, you're speaking of uh, comic books with hell in the title. I like hell. Yeah, I like, I like the hell anyway. Yeah. The priest. <laughs> yeah, the priest. Yeah, the priest. Yeah, or priest, not the priest. So what I exactly? Is it? I can't remember what that was now. In the lead. That that tells a lot about it. Actually, yeah. Well, actually, I haven't seen, seen it yet, but I just remember the previews. I think that's the same one that plays the the lead in Legion. Uh, I think so. Oh. It's, it's the guy that's from Night's Tale. Yeah, Paul Dettany, Mr. Yeah, I didn't realize he was the same guy at Reese. Um, he's I, also the voice of the computer. Exactly. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I love that. Cool. Cool. That's cool. Um, I was completely unaware of uh, anything Constantine until um, my girlfriend Kristen had talked about it, and we actually stumbled across it. Uh, in a five dollar bin somewhere. So I was like, hey, you know, heard about this movie a little bit. Let's check it out. Five dollars. Can't go wrong, right? <laughs> um, so, uh, and, and I got a package that came with a, a book that had some sample stories, so I read that first. So I got just the slightest introduction 
to Constantine before seeing the movie. Um, I thought it was an interesting movie. Um, I thought that the presentation of the spiritual realm of the heavens and the angels, uh, it was it very much treated Christianity uh, like a mythology. No! Which the bothered me evil were of the evil, which is not what the Bible Right. Means. And, and that, that, that bothered me somewhat on, on a spiritual level because, uh, you know, if, you know if, we're, if we're talking about Greek mythology, we see that as mythology. If we're talking about the Bible, we as Christians see that as truth. Uh, we believe it is truth. Um, so to see somebody take it and treat it like somebody might treat a uh, Greek or Roman mythology, it didn't really sit well as far as that aspect of it went. But, you know, the Bible's not a fairy tale, but you know, they did a good job of showing the conflict yes. between good and evil. I, I, I thought Tilda Swinton was good just, for yeah. Will. Exactly, and I, I thought Tilda was was uh, just incredible as uh, as Gabriel, even though I, uh, I didn't like the portrayal of Gabriel in the story so much uh, because I feel like that you know well here's somebody who's on our side and you know we're kind of treating him uh, not really respectfully. Um, and the devil was a great actor too. Don't yes, worry. Oh, oh, yes. He was, uh, I think that might have been the best devil. Yeah. I think so. Uh, this uh, this guy, uh, he's uh, never done a list of the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 just all that. Um, what a bizarre <laughs> I, I just, Yeah, I really uh, One more really good devil's depiction was Angel Heart. Uh, Mickey Rourke is the hero, and it was uh, uh, De Niro was the devil. Was that Mickey? That, that was one of his very first movies, okay, yes. Well, when he looked like a good guy. Yeah, that's right. I like played. But in that one, a private detective is hired to find a singer who's gone missing. Uh, it turns out he was hired by the devil. Uh, and it turns out the detective is the singer. And he didn't know it. He kind of traded his soul with somebody else to escape his own misdeeds. Interesting. Um, I want to go back too to the, the comment you made on Hellboy because uh, this, this is a good example of how you can jump to conclusions on something and uh, uh, make a preconceived notion based on what other people have told you without getting a first hand look at it. Uh, I, I initially avoided Hellboy because what I knew about it was that we have a demon from hell who becomes a superhero. And that bothered me when these protagonists didn't click in your head. <laughs> As a Christian, that, the notion of that bothered me. It seems it was kind of too light. Right. Um, you know, nothing good comes out of hell. Uh, but, uh, well, and you got to be careful because the, the, the devil masquerades the angel of light. When you start putting your trust in him, he's going to stab you in the back. And, uh, bad things happen. Uh, but then, you know, when, when um, somebody lent me the movie, they said, you really got to see this. I'm going to loan it to you. You know, so I'm not paying to see it. I'm like, oh, okay, I didn't give it a shot. And, uh, yeah, I, I, was, I was blown away. I was like, oh, man, I've been missing out. <laughs> and, then, and so in the second, the picture also great. The one that was animated. Oh, really? Yeah, it's it's animated. Awesome. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely be willing to check that out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you pull back from the, from the origin story of Hellboy, uh, you, you can you can look at the, uh, the, the the standard Christian definition of, of demon, all demons being horrible, don't mess with. But when you look at you know all the demons that we have are ones that originally uh, they they stood with Satan and said we're, we're fighting with him. And got swept up. Hellboy is is a offspring of boy. So he, unlike other demons, didn't make the conscious decision to defy God. And it becomes a nature versus nurture kind of thing. Because it's, a, it's an infallible to anyone. Taken away from a, a bad situation, you know, hell itself, and raised by a, a, a religious good man. Among lots of Hellboy as kind of a tongue in cheek religious horror movie. Uh, I also like dog. Which I also like. The angels and dog with the costumes and yep. the I love the Blew me away. Blew me away. The only thing I'll watch from this. Oh. Yeah, that air dog is the only things I can tolerate against.
And I'm like, maybe don't know just because he's uh, covering his face most of the time. I don't know. <laughs> it's not his voice. I just don't like his acting really. Who's that? Ben Stiller. Not a Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, I watched uh, some of all the years when I'm like, we're all going to die. He's in charge of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really But on the other hand, I will watch almost anything with Matt Damon. Yeah, so I, I can't yeah. 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 But, uh,